able to be as short and as concise in the debate there isn't motion on the floor that we alter the arrangements here. Yeah, I, I, I don't want public to think that this is some sort of um, it is one of the things I think that there is one of the things we should look at because notice the motion arrive on the order paper simply in the order that the officers received them. Now uh, that might be a good method or a fair method, but it's, it's not exactly uh, you know try to test it's being challenged. There's a proposal on the floor, has it been seconded? Do, do we need to go to a vote or we want to go to a vote? All those in favour of the change in standard orders, please show. Okay, and those against? I therefore move this motion. 
bunch of abstractions were further. It showed that those who predicted the cost of living crisis uh, were wrong. And demonstrate the clear choice between the They were in fact wrong. Uh, and demonstrate the clear choice between a long term economic plan that is delivering stability and provides business standards and the chaos proposed by uh, Mr. Miller and Mr. Paul's Mr. Man. In fact, I'm afraid uh, Mr. Miller Band just isn't up to the job, in my opinion, of Prime Minister. And that's one of the reasons why this matters so much. I believe he is a weak short termist. He's not capable of competently managing the British economy or the economy of better and the light of the future for our country. Thank you for your attention. Now, that, in fact, Mr. Miller, I'm sure you're aware of this, uh, all Mr. Miller is capable of is spending more, borrowing more, and taxing more. He's too weak to stand up to the noisy demands of, and we've heard this tonight, the unions and uh, his own party. The truth, Mr. Miller, is that Labour haven't changed. So no economic plan was in the mess in the first place. And you, Mr. Merwin, remember uh, the Labour Party's own words on the government, that I'm afraid there is no money. So, Mr. Mayor, such incompetence will be devastating for us improving local economy. It will be a travesty to miss the progress we see here in the world. Mr. Mayor, in this government, employment levels are up. Job seekers' allowances claims are down. Mr. Scar's levels are on the highest in the country. Only £11 billion of government funding has been invested in the area, and we've secured enterprise zone uh, designation, which I think as a leader is most emotional and it's been later this evening. So, it's a good start, Mr. Mayor, but I, for one, I'm sure everyone would agree that the job is far from finished. And this year's election, as I mentioned before, the most important generation. We are on the edge of locking in a recovery, growth, more jobs, and back wages. But economic clout we've seen in the Eurozone and certainly around Greece are gathering elsewhere. So, the choice based on the electorate couldn't be clearer. We can stick with the confidence of a strong Conservative government that's working to a long term economic plan to secure a better future for rural residents, Mr. Mayor. Or we can put all that at risk with Ed Miliband as Prime Minister, propped up by Alex Salmon oh, oh, and the instability and economic chaos that was recalled. More spending, more borrowing, and higher taxes. Mr. Mayor, as I've said uh, before, this election is really important. Mr. Mayor, as we all agree, politics matters. And I would encourage every resident of Wirral to consider what is in the best interest of Wirral, of the country, of the locality, and make sure they go out and vote in the general election in May. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Sorry, guys. Uh, proceed. Sorry.
Mr. Mayor, overall the statistics tell a very good story, and we cannot risk this by placing our economy in the hands of Ed Miller and Ed Bowles. Because with 
that voluntary work and becoming an active member of my party, I was knocking on doors, I was talking to people, and I was seeing that there was a need for compassion and various other things. Now, I don't believe that you can finance this by borrowing money. It's got to be done by the creation of wealth, and that is my, my firm belief and all this attitude. Thank you very much for not interrupting me. I didn't interrupt you, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, uh, Mr. Mayor. Um, and all the time I have been following that along and I brought it into this council. I was privileged and pleased to be able to sit on scrutiny committees with uh, Laura. And I believe the work that you did there was very, very important. I hope all of you have read our recommendations and our report. They were very, very important indeed. And may your efforts in, in, in the welfare in the well-being continue. Um, that uh, is nearly all that I have got the last bit to say. The first thing is, um, how is it? First of all, I, I would like to express my thanks to the officers who I've dealt with in this council over the last four years. Um, not all of them, some of them have gone, uh, but they know who they are because I've always expressed my appreciation of the, of the way they have treated me and the way they have helped me. And finally, my other retiree. I wish him a long and happy retirement, which is very easy to do. But I must say, I will not be sorry to miss his vocal accompaniment at the time. I won't miss that at all. Well, well, if, you, if you sit down, we can have one last one. <laughs>
David Mitchell. Fully seconded to Sir. And call on the seconder of the original motion, which is Councillor Ray. Uh, no right to reply as we're being guilty. Is that okay with everybody? We now take the vote on the amendment in the name of Councillor Gilchrist. All those in favour, please show. Okay, six. And those uh, against?
two abstentions. That concludes the uh, item 11 on notice of motions. We now move on to vacancies. Council has requested to note a change of membership on the pensions committee. A council might call me, but will be replaced by Cathy Hodgson. Council Cathy Hodgson, sorry. Uh, is that, that okay? I do have uh, a couple of items of, of any other business. The first one is a matter of uh, copying the pensions committee minute. 62 has been circulated to all members and it makes recommendations to the pension committee uh, for 2015. Can we please have those vacancies filled and that uh, names given to the officers? Is that agreed? It's a way forward. Yeah, there's a copy of the notes been circulated to members. Okay, can you, will you all agree the, uh, the recommendations of the pension committee minute 62 in, in relation to the establishment of such a board? Is that agreed? Agreed. Right, that's been agreed. We can supply names. Okay. Um, just on, on any other business, clearly this is the last one. We've had a little bit of an end of term feel. Can I just say, it's, as a chair, and I think Les will back me up, it's been a better nature council than it has been for a number of years, and I hope that's a sign of our general maturity and, and the way uh, we did things. We are coming up to elections, and there to get brave. Those who are up for election, Obviously, I wish every one of them uh, luck in the election, some more than others. And, uh, <laughs> we, we, do, we do all have that sense of putting ourselves up for the election, saying what we're about, and take all the consequences of that. It is difficult being an elected member of any party. I know you're all here for the, for the right reasons, and I believe that, that should be too. Let's have a good, clean election on the party and not on the Finally, can I thank our committee clerks and officers who've seen us through. Yeah. Yeah.